Thank you. Thank you very much. And well, I'm going to use my 15 minutes wisely. I'm going to skip the CV part, and I'm going to go straight to the data. I, I'm going to present the re most recent uh, research we have done in the lab on the anti-tumor effects of cannabinoids. And we have been doing this for 20 years already, and it's pretty clear to us, not only from the research that we have done in our lab, but from the research that other groups all over the world have been doing during this time, that cannabinoids have anti-tumor properties. And they can produce these effects by targeting different stages of the disease. They can, sorry, they can kill cancer cells, as it was mentioned before. They can also block the feeding of the new tumoral masses, the process that we call angiogenesis, and they can also block the generation of metastasis. But the truth is that the vast majority of these studies have been conducted with pure cannabinoids, not because we think this is the best uh, therapeutic approach, but because we, w we wanted to understand what was going on inside the cancer cells to understand how cannabinoids work. So, uh, it is pretty obvious also, and I don't think I have to give you any, ex any extra explanation today, that the cannabis plant is a very complex and sophisticated uh, factory, and it produces not only THC and CBD, but a lot of other cannabinoids and a lot of other chemical compounds that have a very interesting therapeutic potential. For example, among the cannabinoids, there are more than uh, 140 different entities, and some of them have very uh, interesting potential therapeutic applications. Some have, sorry, some have antiproliferative actions in cancer cells grown, grown in cultures. And the key issue here is that most of them have not been studied yet. And the same thing happens with terpenes. We know that some of them have uh, interesting therapeutic applications, and I highly recommend you to read the work that Ethan Russo has published in these regards. And again, most of these compounds, and we are talking about more than 100 compounds, way more than 100 compounds, have not been studied, studied yet. And as Didi mentioned before, when we talk about cannabis and about other plants, but cannabis in particular, we have to keep in mind what we call in pharmacology the synergistic effect, or what we call in this uh, auditorium the entourage effect, which means that one plus one is way more than two. So with all these things in mind, the question we tried to address in this specific project was if it was a better therapeutic approach to use pure cannabinoids, THC, CBD, or whole plant preparations. And to answer this question, we established a collaboration with this company here, Selva Therapeutics, based in Australia. And we aimed at comparing the anti-tumor effect of pure THC provided by THC Farm with that of a THC-rich extract provided by OnCell, that's a non-profit mutual benefit corporation based in California. So we have the analysis of a number of cannabinoids, not all of them, but a number of cannabinoids in the preparation, a number of terpenes in the preparation, and because we wanted to be sure that we were comparing the same amount of THC in here and in here, we did not one lab test, but three in different uh, facilities, one in, in the United States and two in Spain, and to corroborate this uh, information, this data. So we did these experiments in different models of breast cancer. Um, my group is working on breast cancer now. And regarding this pathology, we use the same term, breast cancer, to define pathologies that have nothing to do with uh, one to each other in terms of molecular markers, uh, markers treatments, uh, prognosis, etc. So when doctors have to choose a specific treatment for a breast cancer patient, they check for specific markers. And depending on these markers, they subclassify breast cancer in three subtypes. The first one is, uh, is called hormone sensitive because these cancer cells express estrogen receptors or progesterone receptors. And since the estrogenic signaling is exacerbated, 
the aim of these therapies is to shut down this signaling. And we can do that by different approaches. We can remove the endogenous source of estrogens by removing the ovaries, or we can use drugs to interfere with this signaling. And one of them, for example, is, uh, I'm sure you have heard about it, is tamoxifen. The second type of uh, breast tumors is called HER2 positive because these cancer cells express abnormally high levels of this protein called HER2. What do the doctors recommend to these patients? Well, drugs that specifically target this protein, this HER2 receptor. So as Tusuma, Pertusuma, the names are irrelevant at this point. And there is a third uh, entity, which is called triple negative, and the name is self-explanatory. It's called triple negative because these cancer cells do not express estrogen receptors or progesterone receptors or HER2 receptors. And unfortunately, this is the most aggressive phenotype. And unfortunately, since there are no specific markers, there are no specific drugs that we can use for these patients. And they have to receive standard chemotherapy that you will know that is extremely aggressive. Well, we tried to answer the question I mentioned before in the different uh, subtypes of breast cancer. And we started with the hormone sensitive. And what we did was to grow these cancer cells, a cell line that is called T47D, in, in these petri dishes that did this hold you. And we challenged these cells with increasing concentrations of THC. THC that came either from THC farm, in other words, pure THC, or from the uh, botanical drug extract, from the whole plant extract. And as you can see, and here what we represent is cell viability, is the percentage of cells that remain alive in the cell cultures. And as you can see, as we increase THC concentration, these dots go down. In other words, we are killing the cancer cells. And as you can also see very easily in this graph, uh, the, T the pure THC produces this antitumoral action, but the extract is more potent than the pure cannabinoid. In order to see if this was an effect that was exclusively, exclusive, exclusively produced in this uh, cell line, or it was more general and of hormone-sensitive breast cancer cells in general, we performed the same, the same experiment in a second uh, hormone-sensitive breast cancer cell line, MCF7, and the effect was exactly the same. Both poor THC and the extract decreased the viability of these cancer cells, and again, the extract was more potent than uh, the pure compound. We then moved to the second subtype of breast cancer, HER2 positive, and performed exactly the same experiments. And the response was exactly the same. Both THC and the extract decreased the viability of these cancer cells in culture, and again, the extract, the purple line, was more potent in doing that than the pure cannabinoid. And finally, we did these experiments in the triple negative breast cancer cells, and I want to remind you that this is a very aggressive subtype of breast cancer with no targeted therapies yet. And we observed that these cancer cells are also sensitive to cannabinoid treatment. Both the pure compound in green and the extract in purple decrease the viability of the two cell lines of this subtype that we studied. And again, the botanical drug extract was more potent than the pure compound. So from this part, the take home message is that all breast cancer subtypes are sensitive to cannabinoid antiproliferative action and that the extract is more potent than the pure compound. So we next tried to do something similar to what Didi is doing. We tried to combine pure THC with the most prominent, most abundant terpenes in the extract, just to see if we could recreate the effect of the whole plant uh, extract, whole plant preparation, by combining THC with a bunch of other compounds. And we did that in the three subtypes of breast cancer, and I'm gonna guide you through the graphs. We represent here, again, cell viability in percentage. So this is the amount of cells that remain alive, again, in the, in the dishes. And we want these bar, bars to go as down as possible. 
And in the white bars, you have the control cells, that cells that, the cells that do not receive any kind of treatment. And in this uh, line bar, what you see is the effect that the terpenes, only the five terpenes produce on cell viability, which is none. Just using the five can, uh, terpenes, you do not decrease the viability, you do not kill the cancer cells. What happens if we combine THC with, the, with this terpene cocktail? Well, the effect is this one, and if you compare this bar with this one, which is the effect that the THC alone produces, it's very easy to see that combining THC with the co uh, terpene cocktail does not increase the anti-cancer effect of a pure compound. We obtain exactly the same effects in the other two subtypes. This is the effect of the terpenes alone in these two cell lines. This is the effect of THC in the HER2 positive. This is the effect of the THC in the triple negative. And when we add the terpenes to the THC, we cannot improve the anti-tumor effect of the THC. So combination of THC with these five specific terpenes do not, does not recreate the effect of or the potency of THC. <coughs> So what about in vivo effect? Because a lot of things work in vitro, and we can draw some conclusions for, from in vitro studies, but we, if, if we really want to sell an anti-tumor tool, we have to prove that it works in more physiological settings. So what happens if we reproduce these effects in animal models of cancer? And what happens if we combine these cannabinoids with the standard therapies that these patients receive? Well, to answer this question, we conducted a series of experiments in animal models of the three different subtypes of cancer. And we started with the hormone-sensitive ones. And first of all, we started with in vitro studies to, see, to analyze the combination of tamoxifen. This is the drug we used for these, ex these studies. So we, we studied what happened when combining tamoxifen and cannabinoids in vitro. And as you can see here, this is the effect that tamoxifen alone produces. This is the effect that THC alone produces. This is a very low concentration of THC. And when we combine THC and tamoxifen, we see a synergistic response. And exactly the same thing happens when we use not pure THC, but the botanical drug preparation. What happens if we move to the in vivo? We will observe the same thing. Well. In this case, what we represent is tumor volume, the size of the tumors versus time. And these white dots represent how these tumors grow when the animals receive no treatment. So the tumoral masses grow, grow, grow with no control. This is the green line is the effect that THC alone produces. And the purple line, again, is the effect that the botanical drug preparation produces. And I think it's pretty obvious to see that it's more potent than the pure compound. And not only that, but if we compare the effect of the botanical drug preparation with that of tamoxifen, which is the current treatment that patients with this type of tumors receive, you can see that the potency is exactly the same one. We also combined uh, tamoxifen with the botanical drug preparation, and we didn't see a big increase in the anti-tumoral uh, properties of the, of the preparation. We performed similar experiments in HER2 positive uh, models of breast cancer, and in this case, we selected uh, lapatinib, one of the drugs that target, specifically target this receptor, and we obtained very, very similar results. In vitro, when combining lapatinib, this drug, with pure THC, we observed synergistic responses, something very similar with the botanical drug preparation, and exactly the same as we observed before in the in vivo setting. The white line, again, is the control animals. If we treat the animals with pure THC, we get a modest anti-tumoral response, but if we use the whole plant preparation, the anti-tumor effect is much, much higher, much bigger. And if we compare the anti-tumoral potency of the uh, whole plant extract 
with that of lapatinib, again, we see that we have a tool that is as potent as the current medicine that these patients receive. And what about the triple negative? And I remind you again, the most aggressive type of breast cancer that a woman can have. Well, we observed exactly the same thing. When we combined, in this case, we used a chemotherapy agent, cisplatin, and this is the effect that cisplatin produces alone. This is the effect that uh, THC produces. And when we move to the in vivo, again, this is THC. This is the botanical drug preparation, and as you can see, it's more potent than in the pure compound. Three minutes. I'm gonna skip the rest of the lines because I don't have time. And the take home message from this part is that the THC rich extract is more potent than pure THC, both in vitro and in vivo. That the THC rich extract is as potent as the standard therapies that we tested, that are the standard treatments that these patients are receiving. And Unfortunately, the combination of cannabinoids with the tested anti-cancer treatments didn't improve the potency of either one of them. I don't have time to discuss, to discuss why we think this is going on, but uh, that's what we observe. And as a conclusion, uh, we have more than enough evidence that cannabinoids are effective anti-tumor tools in preclinical models of cancer. All breast cancer subtypes resp respond to cannabinoids. Whole plant uh, preparations are more potent than pure cannabinoids and whole plant extracts are as potent as current therapies. I don't want you to go home with the conclusion that the extract we used in this paper is the extract you have to give to your patients. The only point we wanted to make is that it's better to use whole plant preparations than pure compounds. And I want to finish by thanking the people that did the work. I'm just here presenting it, but uh, these are the guys that did it. And here there is my small team, and I want to thank, of course, the team of Aunt Seldas that was absolutely uh, necessary for, for the performance of these uh, experiments. Thank you very much. We have time for one question, if you like. We have what, one minute left. Christina. Very nice. Um, Thank you. There were small amounts of cannabigerol and tetrahydrocannabinolic uh, acid. Um, have you had the chance to test those to see if they were the ones that made the difference? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Yeah, I didn't point it to in, the, in the slide, but the extract had a little bit of CBG and a little bit of uh, another cannabinoid, THCA. And we did uh, check if CBG Combining THC and CBG, we could reproduce the effects, and we were not able to. We haven't done the experiments with THCA, but that's something we want to do, of course. Yeah, very good question. Thank you.